In this video, we're going to be taking notes on adding and subtracting rationals in complex fractions. Before we start with fractions with x's in them, let's go back with a quick refresher from elementary school. If we want to take 1 half plus 2 thirds, in order to add these fractions, we have to have a common denominator. We want a least common denominator to make the fractions the easiest. When we're finding a least common denominator, we're really just multiplying by one in a useful form. Remember, that's the identity property for multiplication. So what one in a useful form are we going to use here? In order to add the two fractions, we need to have both denominators, a two and a three in the same denominator. So for the first fraction, we're missing a three in the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by three on the top and the bottom because I really just multiplied by three over three, which is one. In the second fraction, I'm missing a two in the denominator. So I'm gonna multiply by two over two. It doesn't matter what I have in the top, I'm still multiplying the same things together. Now, I have multiplication in my first fraction, I have one times three, which is three. In my second fraction, I have two times two, which is four. So altogether, I have three plus four, which is seven, and my denominator is two times three, which I would probably call six. And that's how I added fractions in elementary school. What we're gonna do to add fractions in algebra two is gonna follow the same model. The directions will say, simplify each expression. That means combine what I can. So my first step is to factor everything. This was the same step I had when I did multiplication or division as well. In this fraction, my first denominator is x plus one, which is already simplified. My second denominator is x plus four, which is also already simplified. Those are each factors. Notice the x and the four, those aren't factors. It's only all together x plus four is the factor. All right, I wrote them a little bit apart because the next thing I wanna do is to find the LCD. The LCD must have every factor of every denominator. So this first fraction is missing the x plus four from the second fraction. So I'm gonna multiply by x plus four on the top and on the bottom. The only thing I'm allowed to multiply by one is to not change something, so I had to put the same thing on the top and the bottom. My second fraction is missing an x plus one on the bottom, so I need to put an x plus one on the bottom. The only way I can do that is to also multiply by x plus one on the top. So that's step number three there, multiply each fraction on the top and the bottom by whatever factors are missing from the LCD. Now we're up to step number four, add the fractions by adding and simplifying the top and leaving the bottoms as the least common denominator. So if I'm going to put this together, the denominator is gonna be x plus one, x plus four. Just like when I added above, the denominator stays the same. In the top, I just simplify each expression. This is one times x plus four, which is just x plus four. This one is two times x plus one. Well, my two will need to be distributed, so it will be plus two x plus two. I'm gonna leave the bottom in factored form because I like factored form better. It allows me to see what I can reduce in the end. And on the top, I'm gonna to rewrite that by combining like terms. I have one x plus two x, which is three x's. And I have a four plus a two, which is six. I'm gonna scroll down a little so we can see more of our steps. The last step I have on the list is to factor the top if possible and reduce any factors that are the same on the top and the bottom. So looking at the top of this fraction, I have a three as the GCF. If I take the three out, then I still have the quantity x plus two left inside. In this case, it wouldn't have mattered if I factored it because I can't reduce the x plus two with any factor on the bottom. But a lot of times factors are written in this form if it's a multiple choice or a drag and drop SOL type of question. So technically we could have answered this or we could write it in factored form the way I did in blue there. All right, let's try number two as well. On number two, our first step is gonna to be to factor the tops and bottoms of all the fractions. So in this one, I have a little different situation because I have a quadratic on the bottom. So I have to factor x squared plus five x plus four. The way I usually factor quadratics is by using the boxes. x squared plus four goes my boxes. So I'm looking for two things that multiply to four x squared and add to five x. So they'll both need to be positive. They both need to have x's and one times four 
is going to multiply to 4x squared, and the 1x plus 4x will add to 5x. I take the GCF of the top row, so I must have had an x up here, and a 1 up here, and a 4 down here, and then I check 4 times 1 equals 4. So I factored my first denominator into x plus 1 times x plus 4. That was plus. My second fraction, I had a 5x on the top. On the bottom, to factor out 3x plus 3, 3 is the GCF, and that will give me x plus 1. Now I'm ready to try and find my common denominator. So I'm going to look and see what things are missing from my first denominator. My first denominator has an x plus 1 and an x plus 4. My second denominator has a 3. Well, that's missing, so I need to put a 3 on the top and bottom. And an x plus 1. I already had an x plus 1 in the first factor, so I don't need another one. Going to my second fraction, I'm missing the factor of x plus 4. So I need to put an x plus 4 on the top and the bottom. There, I move that factoring out of the way. Okay, now I'm ready to combine everything. My denominator stays the same. It doesn't matter what order I write the factors in the denominator, but usually I'd put a GCF like 3 out in front. The x plus 1 and the x plus 4, they can go in either order. So the top of my first fraction, I just had 1 times 3, which is 3. And in my second fraction, I had 5x times x plus 4. So I'll need to distribute there to get 5x squared plus 20x. So my last step is to just sort of clean this up. Um, let me come down here. I have a 5x squared. I'm going to usually write this in standard form. Plus 20x plus 3. I like to write the biggest exponent first, and then I work my way down. And I leave the bottom the same. Uh, let's just double check on the top here. Are there two things that I can multiply to 15x squared and add to 20x? Well, the only way to multiply to 15x squared is either 1 times 15 or 3 times 5. And even if I put x's with both of those, neither one of them is going to go to 20. So this is prime. And my answer right here is complete and factored. Pause the video while you try number 3. Look at subtraction. I didn't write steps for subtraction, but the steps for subtraction are going to be the same as my steps for addition. The only difference is the first thing I'm probably going to do is going to be change subtraction to add the opposite. Okay. So in other words, I have a tendency to forget this little subtraction sign in the original problem. So I like to change that to a plus and then put the minus up there on the top of the fraction. Uh, it just makes me remember it as I'm going through the problem. I have a tendency to lose subtraction if I don't do that. So once I've changed subtraction to add the opposite, now my next thing is just going to be to follow the steps for addition. My first step for addition was to factor. So that's the first thing I'm going to do in problem number four. Now, in problem number four, I have a little different situation on the bottom. I have 125 minus 5y squared. I typically like my quadratic term, that's the y squared term, to be positive. So if I were factoring this and I see my GCF is 5, so I know I can take the 5 out, but I would also take out the negative as well. So that would give me a negative 25 and a plus y squared when I take out that GCF. I do that because then I have y squared minus 25 if I just change the order of these two. I can change the order because the y squared stayed positive and the 25 stayed negative. I can't change the order unless I keep the signs with them. Then I can factor my y squared minus 25 into y plus 5 and y minus 5. You don't have to factor this way, but a lot of times we wind up with factors where the signs are reversed and it makes it nicer if we always have the letter first. In my second fraction, when I factor out the 3y plus 15, 3 is my GCF, so that gives me y plus 5 as my second factor. So I did all my factoring work, now I'm ready to go to subtraction. My first factor had a 7y on the top, and then the bottom I just factored into the minus 5 times y plus 5 times y minus 5. My second fraction, remember I changed this to add the opposite, so it had a negative 4 on the top. On the bottom, I had the 3, and I had the y plus 5. So what am I missing? In the first fraction, I'm just missing a 3, so I need a 3 on the top and the bottom that I'm going to multiply by. On the second fraction, I'm missing a negative 5, so I'm going to put a negative 5 on the top and bottom. 
and I'm also going to put a y minus 5 because I need one of those as well. So that needed two factors. Okay, multiply by the same thing on the top and bottom. That's the only way I can keep my fractions equal. Now I just need to clean this up. The denominator is going to stay the same. I would like to write my negative 5 and my 3 together, so I'm going to call those negative 15 since they're multiplied, and I had a y plus 5 and a y minus 5. Then I need to put together the tops. The top of the first fraction was 7y times 3, which is 21y. On the second fraction, I had a negative 4 times a negative 5 times a y minus 5. Multiplication, I just go in order from left to right. So I have negative 4 times negative 5 is positive 20. I'm then going to take that and distribute it to both the y and the minus 5. So I have now a positive 20y and a positive 20 times a negative 5 is a negative 100. Last step is going to be to combine like terms on the top. 21y plus 20y is 41y. Then I had my minus 100. On the bottom, I had minus 15. I had y plus 5, and I had y minus 5. This answer is a fine answer. It's not the only right answer. Okay, on number 6, I had my first denominator here which I had to start out and factor. It had a GCF, and then I could factor by boxes, so my first denominator was 3 times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x minus 2. Then I factored my second denominator. My second denominator had a GCF of 3, then I factored what I had left, and my second fraction, the denominator, was 3 times the quantity x minus 1 times the quantity x plus 2. So I took those two fractions, and I put them over here. So what was I missing? My first fraction was missing an x plus 2 on the top and bottom, and my second fraction was missing an x minus 2, so I put that on the top and bottom. Then I went through and simplified. So we need to realize that when I changed this to add the opposite, I have two options. I can either distribute the negative into the first fraction, or I can go ahead and multiply that together, which I can multiply by FOIL or by boxes and then I have to take the negative and distribute it to everybody. So when I'm going to combine like terms in this last step, what I really have is x squared plus negative 2x squared plus 4x minus x and plus 2 if I distribute that negative to everyone. So that's how I got my answer right here. The top didn't factor out, so I just left it as it was. And then I want to start out, it's already in factored form, so now I need the least common denominator for every factor, or for every fraction in the problem. Uh, this first one has an x plus 1, so I need an x plus 1 factor. I have a y, so I need a y factor. On the bottom, I have a y, which I already have, I don't need another one. And I have an x plus 1, which I already have, I don't need another one. So this is what I'm going to multiply. I'm only allowed to multiply by 1, so I'm going to multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1 times y over x plus 1 times y on both the top and the bottom. I'm going to rewrite this to make more space. And I'm going to show how I need to distribute. Again, I change this bottom to add the opposite while I'm at it. So I have x plus 1 times y. All right, now I'm ready to do some reducing. So I can reduce an x plus 1 from the top and bottom, and in my first fraction, all I have left is y. In my second fraction, I can reduce the y's, and I have an x plus 1. In the third fraction, I can reduce those y's. I'll leave that uh, in factored form, or actually I'll probably distribute this out, so I'd have 2x plus 2. The reason I'm distributing on this one is because when I get to the next one, you'll see, I can reduce this x plus 1. I have a minus 1y. It's not really a factor of the bottom, because I still have two terms added together. If this said 2x plus 2 had been the only thing on the bottom, I probably would have left it in factored form. But since it's not the only thing there, I'm going to distribute it. So now I'm just going to rewrite my terms in a different order. Usually we would write this as x plus y plus 1, which can't be factored and 2x minus y plus 2, which again can't be factored. 
Technically, it doesn't matter the order we write the terms, but that's the way they're most likely to show up on a multiple choice. Go ahead and pause the video while you try number 10. All right, in number 10, I had a Y as the denominator of one fraction and an X as the denominator of the other fraction. So I multiplied by XY over XY. I went ahead and distributed to everything. Then I went through and did my reducing. So in my first fraction, I had x, x, and y. You could write that as x squared y if you wanted to. I just left it as x, x, y for now. In the second one, my y's reduced out, and I had, don't forget this minus, I had a minus 1x or minus x. On the bottom here, my x is reduced out, and I had 1y. And on the bottom, I had an x and two y's, which again, I could write as x, y squared or leave it as two y's. That looks like a good answer, but again, I should always factor to see if I can reduce anything. So on the top, I had a GCF of X, so I took that X out, which gave me a factor of XY minus 1. On the bottom, I had a GCF of Y, so I took the Y out, which left me with a factor of 1 minus XY. Now, I'll give me a side note for a second here. If I have the factor A minus B, I cannot rewrite that as B minus A. Those aren't the same thing. Subtraction is not commutative. But if I factor a negative one out of the top, I can change my A to a subtraction and my B to addition. And this is the opposite of B minus A. So if you want to change the order of two things subtracted, we factor a negative out of that. So that's what I did from the top. I factored this negative out in front and then I could change the order of this fraction or this factor to be a one minus X, Y. That way I had the same fraction, top and bottom, and I could reduce them out, which left me with the final answer of negative X over Y. Again, we can write that as negative X over Y. We could write the negative out in front, X over Y, or we could write it as X over negative Y. All three are the same thing. Come into class tomorrow with any questions you have on this, and we'll practice some more.